We've all seen the Hollywood film where someone enters the room and with a quick glance and clever editing, we get the feeling that the character might not be quite what they seem. As the film develops, it becomes clear that our suspicions are founded and they become the main antagonist of the film. Think Moriarty to Sherlock Holmes. In this video, we're going to explore how this gut feeling is used every day by us all when it comes to brands we choose to interact with. Let's travel back around 20 years ago, a slightly younger me, and I had noticed that new customers were getting these great deals when it came to mobile phone contracts, where I was stuck on this old, more expensive option. So as an existing customer, I was getting a worse deal than someone who hadn't ever bought from them before. These companies were seemingly more fixated on new acquisitions than improving and developing the offer for those that were already their customer. Over the years, these businesses have evolved their thinking a bit. They've moved from one that looked at minutes and texts to one that envisaged a new future of brand loyalty. Think Orange Wednesdays, where you could get cinema tickets for free, or O2, who gave customers exclusive early access to gig tickets. Through this merging of the brand with certain experiences, they were not only making more interesting and beneficial for their customer, they were also aligning themselves with other experiences and brands. And through these associations, they were trying to improve their feel to current and future customers. Again, this came at a time when brands were moving from a traditional broadcast approach, where advertising alone had the power of controlling your feelings of a brand due to the limited broadcast channels, as opposed to now where we experience brands differently. Everyone now has the opportunity to be both broadcaster, reviewer, customer, influencer, and user. And every opinion on a brand builds the community or tribe, which provides the overall feel for that brand. With such a seismic change in how brands are molded, brands, in our opinion, need to look to the past by improving themselves. The very best brands are actually simplifying their approach with a simple philosophy. This philosophy has allowed them new success in this continually developing world. Their secret? Control the things you can. If we think about some of the brands doing this well, on a huge scale, we have the new, or is it old, CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, who has started again by looking at their process across production and distribution. Other brands, such as Lidl and Uniqlo, have consistently stayed true to their offer. We understand them. We know the area they live in. They have built their reputations as a brand by strengthening their product and service, by improving quality and standards. They are developing, building, and loving their clients or customers. So what can we take away from these companies? Well, in our opinion, it's about concentrating on meeting customers' expectations. We don't need to exceed them. Don't focus on new clients. We see so many overnight successes, but one day isn't enough. Build repetition, frequency, and consistency into your processes. Think of the kitchen striving for for their first Michelin star. Every day is the day. And commit to what you can commit to. These changes add a significant burden when it comes to brands and how they function. It can feel overwhelming when we then add a layer of social platforms you should be on. But from what we have seen, it can be a lot simpler if you let it be. It boils down to capacity and MVP. And we don't mean minimal viable product, but we'll get to that in a bit. The first thing to consider is what capacity do you have in involving your customers with your brand without affecting the quality of that product or service? Don't try and cut corners. Build the best thing you can and share your story in the simplest way for you. The second aspect is to look at your MVP. And in this case, we mean minimal viable people. How many people do you think you need in your tribe to be sustainable? What is the lowest number? Aim for that. We don't need vanity metrics. We're looking for richly engaged relationships between you and your customers. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, do consider subscribing, drop us a comment, or even give us a like. We post videos nearly every week about design, design thinking, founder stories, science, and digital. Thanks again, and see you in the next one.